This video shows you how to create the example project in the RHVC Online Help named Duck Data Example. Let's take a look at the Duck Data Example topic in the Help. Click the Help on Current Page button to open the Help. Click the Project Pages header in the Table of Contents tree. Click Duck Design. And finally, click Duck Data Example. These are the things we will do in this video. And this drawing shows the duct system we will create. The drawing is for illustration purposes only. First, we'll create a new project. Start by clicking the File menu. Now click New Project. The project we want to create will be a copy of a small example load calculation project that has a few rooms but contains no ductwork. So select Copy Entire Project. We want to select a project from the global list of sample projects, so first click the Import From box. Now click Global Default Projects. The project we want is the second one in the list of global default projects, so click the second item. And finally, click Create New Project. We are now in our newly created project. Before going to the Duck Data page, let's make sure all the options for showing data in the Duck Tree are turned on. First, click the Ducks menu and click Duck Tree Options. And finally, check each of these boxes in order to show all available data in the Duck Tree. Now let's go to the Duck Data page. Click the Return to Duck Data button. We can see that our project has one system named Main Floor. In order to add our first duct, we must first select the supply arrow in the tree. Now we can add our first supply duct. Start by clicking the tree menu. The tree menu is only available while on this page. And click Add Trunk. We can see our new trunk has been added to the tree and the properties available for the current duct are now shown below the tree. Here's the drawing of our duct system again with the new trunk we just added highlighted in green. Now let's add a runout directly downstream of our supply main trunk. Click the tree menu again and click add runout. We can see that the new runout was added directly downstream of our supply main trunk. The new duct we just added, SR100, is highlighted in light green. Next, we will add a trunk under our first trunk. So first, we have to click on our first trunk. Click the Tree menu again. Click Add Trunk. Our newly added trunk, ST110, is highlighted in green. Now we want to add a trunk downstream of ST110, which is already selected. Click the Tree menu again. Here's our new trunk, ST120, in the drawing. We want to add another trunk underneath ST110. Here's ST130. Now let's add another runout underneath trunk ST120. Runout SR110 is highlighted in light green. Let's add another runout under trunk ST120. Select that trunk first. And here's SR120. Now let's add a runout under trunk ST130. And here's where SR130 is in our drawing. Let's add another runout under trunk ST130. Runout SR140 is here in the drawing. We've finished adding the supply ducts, so now let's enter the returns. Click the return arrow to start. And here's where RT100 is in the drawing. Our return system must have at least one return runout in order to be valid. Click Tree and click Add Runout. And here's RR100 in the drawing. 
Now that we've added all of our ducts, let's set some properties. First, we'll set the length of our first trunk, ST100. Now enter a length of 2.5 feet for trunk ST100. Let's set the length property for the other ducts, starting with SR100. Click the next duct down in the tree, ST110. Our project has three rooms. Let's assign a room to each supply runout. The program will then assign a supply airflow to the runout from the load calculation for that room. First, select Runout SR100. The airflow option is already set to get the airflow from a load calculation room, but we haven't assigned a room to it yet. Click Select to choose which of the rooms in the current system to assign to this runout. Runout SR100 feeds the kitchen, so click the Select button for that room. We can see that Runout SR100 has now been assigned to the kitchen. Now let's assign the living room to Runouts SR110 and SR120. Click Select. Choose the living room. Now put SR120 in the same room. Now let's put SR130 and SR140 in the bedroom. Select run out SR140. Unlike supply runouts where you can only assign one room to each runout, for each return runout, you may assign one or more rooms to it. If you do not assign your return runouts to any particular rooms, the program defaults to evenly splitting the return airflow among all the return runouts. For illustration, let's assign all three rooms to our system's one return runout. Click the Select button again. The list of rooms now has a checkbox for each room, so you can select multiple rooms for each return runout. Check each box. Click Return to Duct Data. In order for the program to give us accurate pressure loss results, we need to be sure to assign fittings to the ducts. Start by clicking trunk ST100. Click Add Fitting. Whenever we select a fitting, we must first choose the category or group that the fitting is in. For our main trunk, ST100, we want to select Group 1, Supply Air Fittings at the Air Handling Equipment. The fitting with ID 1-C happens to match what we want, so click its Select button. Now we can see that fitting 1-C has been assigned to trunk ST100. At the downstream end of trunk ST100 is a straight T fitting, but even though it's one physical fitting, we need to assign two different fitting IDs. One will be for the straight outlet of the T, and the other is for the angled outlet. First, we'll assign the ID for the angled outlet, which feeds runout SR100. Here's where SR100 and ST110 are in the drawing. Note that even if trunks ST100 and ST110 are the same physical duct, we had to enter them as separate ducts. That's because takeoff SR100 makes it so ST110 has less airflow than ST100. Click Add Fitting. Select Group 9. 
here we can see that fitting IDs 9-A1 and 9-A2 are for the same physical fitting. Fitting 9-A1 has branch in the description, indicating that it is for the angled outlet of the fitting. And 9-A2 has main in the description, indicating that it is for the straight outlet. We are selecting the fitting ID for the angled outlet of the T, branch, so select 9-A1. Now let's set the ID for the straight outlet of the same fitting. First, select trunk ST110. Click Add Fitting. Select Group 9 again. And finally, select fitting ID 9-A2, which is for the straight outlet of the straight T fitting. The word main indicates that this ID is for the straight outlet. Now let's select the rest of the fittings for the ducts. Select duct SR100. Click Add Fitting. Select Group 11. And select Fitting 11-B Flex Duct Bend. This flex duct bend fitting occurs twice in duct SR100, so we need to edit the details for this fitting. Click Edit. Since this flex duct bend occurs twice in the current duct, change the quantity input to 2. Click Return to Duct Data. Now we want to add a boot fitting 4-H to run out duct SR100, so click Add Fitting again. Select Group 4. Click the Select button for fitting ID 4-H. Trunks ST120 and ST130 are connected to the downstream end of ST110. Trunk ST120 uses fitting 9-E1, so let's select that duct so we can assign that fitting. Click Add Fitting. Select Group 9. Trunk ST120 connects to the upstream duct at a 90 degree angle and matches the picture for 9-E1 and 9-E2. Since it has branch in the description, the angled outlet of the fitting, select 9-E1. Now let's continue assigning fittings. Select SR110. We have more fittings to assign to the current duct. Let's continue setting fittings, so select Runout SR120. Select Trunk ST130 to continue assigning fittings. Trunk ST130 connects to its upstream duct at a straight angle, so we need to select the fitting with main in the description, 9-E2. Let's continue with SR130. Continue with Runout SR140.
Now let's assign fittings to the return side. Start by selecting RT100. Select fitting 5-C. Select our return runout RR100. Select group 6.2. Select fitting 6-F. In this project, all the trunks are supposed to be rectangular, while all the runouts are supposed to be round in shape. Rather than set the shape property individually, let's use the Set Multiple Duct Properties page. Click the Ducts menu to get started. Click Set Multiple Duct Properties. We want to set all the trunks to have a rectangular shape, but leave all the runouts as round. We want to make sure all the include checkboxes are unchecked to make sure we are only setting the one property we want to set. Click the clear button to uncheck all the include checkboxes. The property that we want to set is the shape property, so check the include checkbox for that property. We want to set the selected trunks to all be rectangular. To make all the trunks in the system rectangular in shape, click Apply Settings to Selected Ducts. Now let's check out the results on the Duct Results page. Click the Ducts menu and click Duct Results Grid. We can see in the Evaluation of Project box that there were no errors or warnings in the duct system calculations. Thanks for watching.